In 2010, Netflix migrated to the cloud, and one lesson they learned along the way was that the best way to avoid failure is to fail constantly. They created a tool called Chaos Monkey that would induce failure by randomly killing instances and services. The Netflix team later released Chaos Monkey as open source software. And that leads to a question that people ask me all the time. Should I use Chaos Monkey? So let's dive into Chaos Monkey, what it is, how it works, and whether you should use it. Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. Before we get into Chaos Monkey, I just wanted to say that I've got a whole bunch of episodes planned, so if you want to be notified when I add them, hit that subscribe button. So back to Chaos Monkey. It's worth noting that the open source version is Chaos Monkey 2.0. The Netflix team created a whole bunch of monkey tools, from Chaos Kong that would destroy entire regions, to Janitor Monkey that cleaned up after all the destruction. And together, all of these tools were part of a larger Simeon army. But over time, newer, better tools replaced pieces of the Simeon army, and in 2018, the project was retired. Chaos Monkey exists in its own repository, and I'll link to that below. And it's not officially retired. But one thing is clear, and that's that the project doesn't have active development, and it only receives some minor maintenance occasionally. But enough history. Let's talk about how it works. Chaos Monkey has two dependencies, MySQL and Spinnaker. MySQL is an open source database, and it's where Chaos Monkey tracks the terminations that are scheduled and the ones that have been run. And this tracking is important because although it's supposed to randomly kill things, true randomness isn't very desirable. Tracking allows for control to ensure that services aren't ignored or aren't too frequently attacked. Spinnaker is an open source continuous delivery platform. It's how Netflix deploys services and provisions infrastructure. And with Chaos Monkey, it's how they also destroy those services and instances. Spinnaker works with a broad number of cloud providers, from AWS to Azure to GCP, and even Oracle Cloud. Generally speaking, if you can manage it with Spinnaker, then Chaos Monkey can destroy it. You just have to mark your application in Spinnaker as Chaos Monkey enabled. Chaos Monkey runs via a daily cron task. Once each day, it takes a look at all the services that have been marked as Chaos Monkey enabled. Then it randomly selects targets and scheduled times. Those attacks are scheduled as additional cron tasks and recorded in MySQL. And when each cron task meets the scheduled time, that task is sent to Spinnaker to destroy the selected service or instance. So now that you know how it works, should you use it? Well, the first qualifier is obvious. If you're not using Spinnaker, then you can't use Chaos Monkey. And while I think Spinnaker is a fantastic tool, it's got a lot of great features, setting it up isn't a trivial task. And it's a bit nuts to migrate your entire CI-CD pipeline just for Chaos Monkey. The second qualifier is that open source tools work best when they have a large, active community. Chaos Monkey doesn't really have that. So you're on your own when it comes to support. And the third qualifier, the one that I think is the most important, is this. Will you learn more about your systems by random destruction or with a methodical process? There's no doubt that you'll learn a lot from running Chaos Monkey, but I think most engineers are under enough stress already. And I think that random destruction might be using the fear of incidents more as a negative incentive than a positive one. There are plenty of other chaos engineering tools out there. Too many for me to list or even review all of them. And obviously, I'm a little bit biased. But that said, if you're choosing a tool and working on your list of requirements, my main advice would be to focus on the learning aspect. 
Every chaos engineering tool can destroy things. That's what they're built for. But will that tool be conducive to learning? Will it help you be a more knowledgeable engineer? And that's a question that you'll have to answer as you review tools. I hope you've enjoyed this video. As always, if you found it helpful, click the like button and I'll see you in the next video.